Now, when I was growing up, there were, I'd say, roughly four major things that fostered my imagination and made me fall in love with stories, with fantasy and sci-fi in particular, and inspired me to one day hopefully write stories of my own that people would, you know, actually read and maybe, just maybe, be inspired by the way I was and maybe enjoy as well. And those four things were Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, comic books, Marvel mostly, and mainly Thor and X-Men, as well as Dungeons and Dragons. And when I say D&D, I mean both playing the game with friends as well as reading some of the novels, primarily the ones set in the world of Dragonlance, or the world of Kryn, I should say, since Dragonlance is the name of the setting, not the world. Anyway, those things inspired me not because I could see myself in them literally. I mean, sure, I may have at some point or points imagined myself climbing the slopes of Mount Doom to rid Middle-earth of the One Ring, or imagined myself flying an X-Wing through the Death Star Trench, but in the back of my mind, even at a very young age, I knew I'd never be called on to do anything quite like that in the real world. I knew the fate of humanity was never going to be in my hands, and if for some reason it ever was, well then God help us all, because I'm not Frodo or Sam, I'm not Luke Skywalker, I could never do what they did. Very few who have ever lived could pull off such incredible heroic feats as they did. But that's not really the point of them or their stories. We're not meant to try and be exactly like them to replicate and meet this near-perfect heroic ideal they represent. Instead, they're supposed to inspire us to strive to be better people or better to one another because there are no literal and overt Sith Lords in our real world to defeat, no simple solutions like just destroying the One Ring to rid ourselves of those who would seek to rule and dominate others. Instead, all too often evil hides among us and takes different forms, far less obvious forms, and solutions to making the world a better place for all are far more complex than tossing a ring in some lava or hitting a target two meters wide. Not to mention, our best hope is not waiting for someone else to step up and do what is right in some huge, grandiose way, but for us to do better in our own small ways, in our own lives, right now, today. And that's what these heroes and their stories are to me, what they represent. They're a reminder not to wait for someone else to take charge and make the change, or to do what needs to be done to make the world a better place. If Frodo can stand up and say he'll take the ring to Mount Doom, well, I can certainly take a moment out of my busy and important life to help someone in some small way. Basically, their stories are a reminder that I or we will constantly face choices and challenges, both large and small, throughout our lives, and that with perseverance and belief, we can hopefully overcome most of them, and that when we fail, perhaps there will be someone else there to help us as we will be there to help them. They're a reminder that I always have a choice between what is right or wrong, or maybe between what is right and what is easy, that I can choose to do good, choose to be kinder, choose to be more selfless, simply because it is right and required of all of us from time to time to, again, make the world a better place. Because obviously we all have big dreams and things we want to do in our life or accomplish. We all want to be happy, right? Frodo wanted to go on an adventure for the sake of an adventure at first because he wanted to be like his uncle Bilbo. He wanted to see the world. And Luke, well, Luke just wanted some power converters and to go off to the academy to get off of Tatooine and do something besides be a moisture farmer. But by the end, both were willing to sacrifice anything and everything for everyone else. They both showed us that we should not be judged on how far we've personally made it, but rather by how many people we've helped along the way. How many crossed the finish line with us or because of us, not how many we left in the dust. I don't admire the person who achieves greatness or wealth by using or stepping on the backs of others. I admire the person who has the backs of others and inspires greatness in them, who uses their wealth to help others. Which, after that long-winded preamble, thanks for sitting through it, brings us to maybe one of the greatest ironies of our time, that so many of these great, timeless stories that are meant to inspire us to be better people, to teach us to give and sacrifice instead of always looking to take for ourselves, forsaking and using others along the way, well, they're now owned or being used by some of the largest corporations in the world, or the richest people in the world, to make even more money, all the while not truly caring about the stories or the people who love the stories about the fans. And, well, that might not be so bad if the people actually working on the stories themselves or writing and creating these stories or adapting them for the big or small screen, if they truly cared about the stories, cared about getting them just right to honor those who created them, honor what they represent, and honor the fans who love them and are passionate about them. Though, yes, thankfully there are still sometimes those who create out of passion instead of greed with these franchises, someone or someones like Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau with Star Wars, for example, and the many others who work with them, 
they do very much seem to care and they have to do it all the while i'm sure contending with disney and lucas from who do only care about the money and though you may not always love and agree with everything they do with star wars which is fine we as fans don't always have to like and agree with everything or agree that it's all good or all bad but they at least seem to be motivated more by their passion and love for star wars than anything else they do right by it and its creators and fans they try to keep its integrity intact as they expand the franchise and when you hear them talk when they're interviewed you never hear them say things like they can do it better than lucas that they can change star wars to fit what it should be today which isn't to say they don't try to make it more inclusive and or diverse or that it's a bad thing that they try to do it i think those are good things personally i mean star wars is an entire galaxy spanning multiple eras with room for more and that has countless worlds and different races or species of people most of which the large percentage of which have never been explored there are infinite stories in the star wars galaxy and so when you keep in mind how different even we here on the real world are this one planet well then of course there's more than enough room for all types of people within that galaxy and in theory all types of stories to be told that said i'd still argue there are limits that some things some story ideas are obviously more suited for star wars than others that it shouldn't stray too far from what lucas meant it to be or from the philosophies and messages behind it that again, the integrity of it should never be compromised to fit someone's desire to use it for something that doesn't hold true to the spirit of Star Wars. And certainly this is a belief that Favreau and Filoni hold to as much as they can. They're not trying to create it for literally everyone. That'd be impossible. You can't please everyone. And the more you try to do that, the more you try to please absolutely everybody, the more you end up pleasing no one. Instead, they're trying to make it as inviting as reasonably possible for anyone who wants to explore another galaxy, one that's similar to our own in some ways, but in many ways is still very different. One that, again, has its own integrity, that is, its own thing separate from our world. Which, in my opinion, is one of the best and most important or attractive aspects of Star Wars about that galaxy, that it is something else, somewhere different. It's not just a poorly disguised reflection of our world, that it can help you escape from this one for a little while, and you can immerse yourself in somewhere different, while still being able to, on many levels, relate to the characters and be inspired by them as we face our own challenges in this world. This then all leads to the problem people are having with what we've seen and learned about the new Lord of the Rings series on Amazon called The Rings of Power. This is why there is a war going on in that fandom and even beyond it. Because not only does the story, those characters, and world mean something to them, mean something to the fans for all the reasons I talked about before, but because the integrity of Middle Earth and the original intent of Tolkien's work is very important to them as well, something they want to see honored above all else. And that intent, his original intent, despite what the creators of this new series claimed when they said that it only felt natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looks like, and that Tolkien is for everyone, they couldn't, for better or worse, they couldn't be any more wrong on so many levels. It was never intended for everyone. It was intended for anyone who wants to enjoy what it is, which is, stated by Tolkien himself, in English-based mythology. But not only that, but there's just inherently very little flexibility in general with the story, unlike Star Wars that again spans an entire galaxy and can go to any point in time and space within it, be it the far, far future on the other side of the galaxy, or the distant past in the known parts. And that is a story that has, by now at this point in time, seen multiple people contribute to it over the decades, Middle Earth is a small land that has three already well set in stone ages, a very rigid history created only by Tolkien and to some degree his son Christopher. Lord of the Rings is not something that is ever expanding or was ever created to be something like that, or could be unless you explore different parts of the world itself, I suppose, beyond Middle Earth. It simply is what it is, and if that's not your thing, that's fine. We thankfully live in a world with many, many other stories in all different types of formats that you can enjoy. It shouldn't have to change just so it can be something you might now enjoy. In fact, it's kind of selfish, very selfish, to expect something or someone to change based on what you'd like it to be or believe it should be. I mean, isn't that what the whole diversity movement is or should be all about? Realizing we're all different, we all like different things, and that's perfectly okay that we should celebrate the fact that we live in a world that isn't a 
one-size-fits-all world with no variety. Isn't, when you really think about it, reshaping Lord of the Rings the opposite of what many are advocating for these days? Would the same people who want to change this story be okay with, say, changing another beloved book based on a different culture, perhaps one that is Asian or African, for example, wouldn't they be upset if someone made changes to those? I know I would be, and I don't want to see a story that means a lot to a particular culture or group of people changed and used like that, used just to sell Amazon Prime subscriptions, which if we're being completely real and honest here, is what is the real motivation here, what people are really upset about. I know it's easy to cry racism and try to leave it at that, but the real issue here is that Amazon is making money at the cost of the integrity of a beloved world by a man who is long since dead but is celebrated as one of the greatest authors of our time. That's where the issue is. They're just using it, and granted they paid a lot of money to use it. I'm not arguing their legal right to make this series. But they're just using it with no regard to what it originally was or was meant to be, expanding its appeal as much as possible to try and market it to literally everyone. Well, everyone it seems but those who originally loved it simply for what it was. I mean, can't anything be sacred anymore, immune from the desire for the almighty dollar and free from someone's need to preach to you with a megaphone created by another, and never created for the intent they want to use it for? And yes, I know one of the big counter-arguments here. They're not changing the original books. They're still there and can be read and enjoyed by anyone forevermore. This is just an adaptation, one not meant to be completely faithful to the original. And to that I would say, or ask, what's the point of it then? What's the point of using Tolkien's work if you don't want to actually use Tolkien's work or honor what it was supposed to be? I mean, if you truly have something to say that doesn't reflect what the original creator intended, then why not create something of your own? If you're just taking the foundation and doing something different with that foundation, why not make your own foundation? Because twisting Tolkien's work to preach your agenda does not impress me. But writing a whole new story that is an actual and at least somewhat subtle commentary about the state of the world, should that be what you want to write about or create, and that maybe isn't completely one-sided, but actually explores the issue with some nuance, now that would impress me. That would deservedly get attention, not because you killed and animated the corpse of another franchise, but because you not only made something original, but made something that perhaps got people to think instead of telling them how to think. Something that might actually do some good, that wasn't just an attempt to prove a point or win an argument, but to actually bring peace and compromise to a world that desperately needs it. When Amazon lays down a billion dollars to create something like that, well then, I'll be impressed. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you think about all this. Let's talk some Star Wars, some Lord of the Rings, let's talk in general. And until next time, thanks for watching.